Hi there. My name is Johanna, and I'm going to be reading a story to you about a Japanese family. And it's called Thank You Very Mochi. Thank You Very Mochi by Pa Matsushima, Sophie Wang, and Craig Ishii. Story concept by Pa Matsushima, illustrated by Jing Zhang. To the generations before who taught us these lessons, and to the generations after who will carry them on. Every December, Kimmy's family woke up bright and early to go to their family Mochitsuki. Time to get up, Kimmy heard from downstairs. We're going to Grandma and Grandpa's. Kimmy popped out of the covers. Yummy mochi, here I come, she yelled as she jumped out of bed. As the family buckled up for the long drive, Kimmy's mom asked, What's the first thing you're going to do when we get there, Kimmy? I'm going to make the biggest mochi ever, Kimmy said, and I want to put shoyu on it and furikake and red beans. Kimmy's family finally arrived, but as they walked up to the house, Kimmy noticed that something was wrong. Grandma was holding the front door open. The uncles and aunties were rushing in and out of the kitchen, and the cousins were fanning smoke out of the windows. What's happening? Kimmy asked. The mochi machine is broken, yelled Grandma as Kimmy and her parents rushed into the house. Kimmy's face fell. Does that mean mochitsuki is canceled? she worried. Just then, they heard a voice from the backyard yell, Out here! It was Grandpa. Follow me, he said, gesturing toward the garage. Our machine may be broken, but I have something better. As the family headed over, Kimmy wondered, But how can you make mochi without a machine? I sure hope this works. Grandpa pointed to a stone bowl and a few wooden mallets in the corner as the family squeezed into the garage. When I was little, this piece of rock and these hunks of wood were all we had to make our mochi with, he said, chuckling. Can we really make mochi with those? Kimmy asked doubtfully. Of course we can, Grandpa replied. Help me move everything to the backyard and I'll show you just how we'll do it. The mochizuki tools were heavy, but everyone did their part. The cousins lugged the wooden mallets while it took all of the aunties and uncles to carry the giant stone bowl. Grandpa led the parade with shamoji in hand, explaining how to set everything up. Grandma handed Kimmy the pot of mochikome. You get to carry a very important ingredient, Kimmy. After all, you can't make mochi without the rice, she said, smiling. Okay, I'll be careful, Kimmy giggled. Outside, Grandpa picked up one of the tall mallets. He leaned over to Kimmy and said, The last time I made mochi this way, this kine was taller than me. Kine? Kimmy asked. Ah, yes, kine are the mallets we use to pound the mochi, Grandpa said. My father told me to remember it this way. The kine are skine, like skinny, get it? I can't believe I haven't used these since I was a boy, he chuckled. Kimmy giggled. She couldn't imagine Grandpa as a little kid. As they set up the stone bowl, Grandpa explained, The mochi is pounded in this bowl called an usu. We remember this one as, ooh, super heavy. In my day, we didn't have fancy mochi-making machines. If we wanted to eat mochi, we had to work all day long for it, he continued. Whoa, all day, Kimmy thought. She never realized how easy she had it. Now we pound the rice, Grandpa said. My father taught me that we count off in Japanese to make sure no one gets hurt. Ichi, ni, san, shi. Ichi, ni, san, shi, the four cousins yelled as they took their turn. 
Ichi-ni-san-shi. Kimmy and Grandpa shouted as they took their turn. Wow, Kimmy thought as her arms started to tire. This is a lot of work. Good thing everybody is here to help. On to the next step, Grandma said, sending the family inside to mold, stuff, and package the mochi. Kimmy stayed with Grandpa to pound the last batches. As wood from the kine flaked into the rice, she asked, Should I take those wood chips out? Grandpa chuckled, wiping sweat from his brow. No, no, no. As my father always said, the wood flakes and sweat are where the flavor comes from. As the sun set, Kimmy looked inside, eyes wide at all the mochi they had made. You know, Kimmy, there's one ingredient we couldn't have made this mochi without, Grandpa said. Can you guess what it is? The rice? Kimmy asked. Grandpa shook his head. The kine and usu? The shoyu and red beans? Grandpa shook his head. If it's not the rice or the kine and usu or the shoyu and red beans, what is it? Kimmy asked. Family. Kimmy thought about Grandpa's answer as she looked around. She thought about how close she felt with her whole family after working alongside them. She thought about the joy of everyone being together every year. Without family, there would be no mochitsuki. Family really was the most important ingredient. You know, Kimmy, it doesn't matter what kind of tools we use to make mochi, Grandpa said softly. It's about doing it together. My family passed that lesson on to me, and I hope one day you'll pass it on to your family too. Kimmy hugged Grandpa. Okay, Grandpa, I will. After cleaning up, Kimmy and Grandpa went back inside. Kimmy grabbed a piece of warm, soft mochi and smiled at all the people in the room. After a long day working together, she had a greater appreciation for not just Mochitsuki, but for her family. What will you do to carry on Grandpa's message for the next generation? I hope you enjoyed this story and that you learned a lot about Japanese culture. Thanks for reading along.